let's have the key to 12 curriculum framework as as pr i have presented a while ago in the previous slides the k-12 framework the four features the important features of the curriculum now this time you have here the curriculum model uh you have here from kindergarten medyo malabo siya so ang pino focus ay yung learning domains in a way ang concern lang naman natin ay from grades 7 to 10 because you're a secondary school teachers someday uh in 11 and 12 grade 7 a new high school the new high school term, ano, grade 7 and to 8. And the new high school years, the grades 9 to 10. And the grades 11 to 12, that is your senior high school. For your senior high school, mapapansin nyo, ang focus na ngayon dito ay nasa core subjects pa rin. Meron pa rin tayong core subjects kung ang learning areas natin during our uh, uh, junior high school, meron tayong FEMSA na tinatawag, yung Filipino, English, Math, Science, and Aralin or the Social Studies are the core learning areas in junior high school. Pagdating natin sa senior high school, nandito pa rin. And emphasized sa tracks, specifically academic track, under STEM strand, doon natin makikita kung saan nagkaroon ng focus sa STEM or sa Science, Technology, and Engineering, Mathematics curriculum all right it is the, because the reason of this framework is that to enhance the teacher education curriculum of chat that's why if you could notice there are uh, the subjects are more diverse and more uh enriched and deepened in your college meron na kayong general education subjects kasi class to tell you the subjects that you have uh accommodated during your uh, senior high schools are actually the subjects that we had during our college years. Yung mga uh, uh, pananaliksik nyo in your Filipino, your communication, communication at pananaliksik, uh, actually those are the subjects that we have during our uh, college years. Yun ang mga subjects namin before. But in your case, ang dami nang naad, ang dami nang nadagdag sa college nyo na talaga namang hindi namin, na, hindi kami na-exposed during our time in some of your subjects, okay? And all courses in teacher education program met the demands of the 21st century classrooms. Okay, so proceed tayo dito class. So these are actually the, the different levels of learning and teaching uh, in science education. First, strengthening early childhood education or yung tinatawag natin na Universal Kindergarten Act. Meron itong batas na ipasa, that is why. It is a compulsory subject. Take note, class. Actually, lumalabas na sa let. It is, I mean, it is a compulsory, not subject, level of basic education. The kindergarten. Ano? Na kinakailangan before a pupil or a child be uh, accommodated for grade 1, they have to at least be involved, be, be into kindergarten. Kasi kinakailangan, they have this uh, learning domains, yung alam natin yung learning domains natin, yung basic uh, macro skills, yung uh, listening, yung mga kinakailangan masharpen ang kanilang uh, gross motor skills, fine motor skills na ginagawa sa kindergarten. So child is expected to have access to early child education facilitated by using technological tools. And these are actually present and evident in teaching alphabet, gumagamit tayo ng mga pamphlet. Nakita natin yon. Numbers, shapes, and colors, lalo na sa colors. Uh, pupils or the child in kindergarten, kindergarten are actually captivated and motivated when it comes to different colors. And through games and songs, kaya ang dami nating nursery rhymes in dances in their mother tongue. Secondly is that making the curriculum relevant to learners. Yung minention natin kanina that it has to be context contextualized in nature and be enhanced. So it should be based on research that shows that learners will value a curriculum that is relevant to their world. Kasi when we handle or when we teach our students that is beyond their, their locality, our examples are beyond their capacity. Na ibibigay natin examples American scenario, nasa Singaporean scenario, though we may adopt the practices of this um, foreign countries when it comes to science education, but remember that we have to enhance 
their practices, we have to contextualize these things in order for our students to at least relate and to make it more relevant to the world of our students. So, for example, you are teaching uh, diversity or biodiversity. So, it would be best kung naibibigay natin na examples lang the diversity of fish sa Mandaon port. When we are referring to earth science, nag, ang topic natin ay sa earth science, pwede natin, or minerals, pwede natin ilagay sa scenario and positive side and negative side ng filmenera. Those are some of the important things, contextualization and enhancement. This is why we are expecting in your learning plans that majority of your examples, majority of your activities are contextualized in nature. Hindi tayo kukuha ng examples. Like, pagdating natin sa earthquakes, ano, volcanoes, pagdating sa earthquakes, we can have an examples of what had happened during the earthquakes happened in Katayngan. Alright? Are you listen? Are you still there, class? Pwede natin isite sa examples natin yung mga evidences na present ng FIVOX na talaga naman nangyari yung mag, um, uh, magnitude, magnitude 6.7 or 6.1 na nangyari sa Katayngan. We can cite that one. Pwede natin yun ilagay para lalo na yung mga taga-Katayngan. Mapifeel nila... Hala, nasa libro na, nasa learning plan, na, nasa learning plan ni teacher, yung barangay namin. Relatable siya. Madali siya ma-relate ma ng mga estudyante natin. And with that, ma-arose ang kanilang interest in learning the subject. And students need to have personal connection to a lesson material which can be done through engaging them emotionally or through connecting the information that they have already know. Kasi... As what I have presented, kasi nalaman nila, nakita nila sa balita na talagang binalita na sa katayngan ganito, na ang Filminera, there is a negative side when it comes to the topics on issues and challenges of the minerals. So, okay, so there are tips for making learning engaging and personally relevant according to Briggs 2014. So first, eto class, take note on this, use suspense and Keep it fresh. In integrating technology tools or ICT tools in your lesson, kung gusto niyo suspense and make keep it fresh, um, kinakailangan ahead of time, we have to prepare these things. Ano? Ako before, ang pin na enjoy ko na activity, if I have, uh, if I will meet my students by tomorrow and we'll be having an activity, yung hot seat, prior to that, ang ginagawa ko na is that naglalagay na ako ng meta strips Pagdating uh, way back, yung classic is about classification of plant cell and animal cell. Ang ginawa ko is hot seat siya. Meta strips nakalagay na sa ilalim ng upuan ng mga estudyante at nagkakaroon ako ng ruleta para mapili. Titingnan doon sa ilalim ng chairs kung sino yung nakabunot at dapat merong ding parang uh, exemptions or doon sa maswerte. Kaya kinakalaan pagpasok ng estudyante ko, papaupuin ko sila parang nakarambol sila. Hindi doon sa kala na nakagawian nilang upuan. Kailangan nakasuspense yon or kailangan alam, hindi nila alam na yun pala ang maging activity. Doon sa classification of plant and animals, kukuha sila ng meta strips na nakadikit sa, sa upuan nila. Pag nakita nila, make sure na na-discuss mo lang different organelles. Nakita nila like, ah, this is mitochondria. Now, mitochondria din dinikit ko sa two sides, sa dalawang side ng classroom, plant cell, animal cell. Titignan nila, if these organelles are present in plant cell or animal cell. So, pabilisan yun. Ano? Para tayong nasa pula puti ng wawawin. Then, kailangan may elimination round. So, kinakailangan, wag natin agad sabihin sa estudyante. So, uh, then, make it student-directed. Kasi, uh, later on sa ating active learning in science, meron tayong tinawag na active learning. Meron siyang prob problem-based, project-based, and inquiry-based. So, kinakailangan, it has... Uh, Kinakailangan, it has to be student-directed at times. But take note, class, a student-directed can only be possible if our activities in our lessons can be carried out by our students alone. Remember, ha? Kasi there are topics, isipin natin, pwede din natin maging teacher-directed. Hindi teacher-centered, ha? Hindi teacher-centered. Teacher-directed in the sense na ikaw ang magpa-facilitate, lalo na when there is a need to provide um, learning materials na hindi kaya i-provide ng estudyante. So, po pwede tayo ang mag-provide. Nakuha? Ayan. Second, provide utility value. Kinakailangan that 
uh, the value of the activity. Hindi yung nagpagawa tayo ng activity, then right after that, after conducting the activity, wala na. Hindi na hindi ma-appreciate ng estudyante yung value ng ating activity. Okay, class, submit your worksheet after af, after that. Wala nang feedback na pre-provide si teacher. If possible, in providing feedback, kailangan ano yun? After the activity, kailangan meron kaagad tayong immediate feedback na ginawa sa estudyante in order for the students to at least feel na am I doing it right? Am I in the right track of conducting the activity? Tama kaya yung ginawa ko na pag-conduct ng experiment? Kasi hindi tayo nakapag-provide ng value of the activity. Then third, I mean fourth, connect lesson to their lives and what they already know. Yun yun sinasabi natin. We have to contextualize. We have to make it more relevant to the experience of our students. We have to connect that activities to their day-to-day uh, living. Ano? Okay, for example, our topic is on digestion. Nasa organ system na tayo. Ang topic natin is digestion. Sinasabi natin na talagang there is the occurrence of mechanical digestion na sinasabi natin with the presence of the enzymes thialine in our mouth. So, paano talaga yun? So, pwede natin ma- mag-solicit, we can withdraw uh, information from our students na when they chaw or pag ngumuya sila, na-feel nila yung parang globules or talagang na, na parang na-feel na nila, na-experience ba nila? Tanungin natin sila. Na-experience ba nila na uh, in some of their, uh, in an instance na kumain sila is that habang inunguya nila, na-feel nila na parang may globules o parang uh, malapo or something na there is an involvement of the thialine or yung enzyme sa ating bibig. Then pagdating sa ating peristaltic activity, pagdating natin sa part ng, ng glotis, ng epiglotis, paano nangyayari yung voice va- box na minsan nabibilaukan tayo? Paano yun nangyayari? We can withdraw that based on the experiences uh, sa estudyante natin. And lastly, build relatedness. Ayun. Kailangan i-ano natin, hindi yung gagawa tayo ng examples natin sa lessons natin, yung mga estudyante coming from other countries. Kasi it would be best na lalo na pag nag-craft tayo ng learning plans na talagang relatable siya on the part of the student. Third of the feature or the importance of the curriculum is that building proficiency. So when very well, it has been um, a controversy in the implementation of the mother tongue-based multilingual education. Sadyang ano, uh, nagkaroon pa ng debate, ayaw ng mga magulang na, na magkaroon ng mother tongue-based. So in our case, talaga, medyo mahirap sa ating part, ano, especially sa science. Kasi there are translation naman actually ng terms. There are some terms na uh, translation sa, in Filipino, but uh, there are also, nahihirapan tayo pag na translate natin sa mother tongue. Remember that mother tongue it is really the yung nakagisnan or kinalakihan ng bata mula sa pa, uh, natuto siyang magsalita. Okay? Yun ang pinaka mother tongue niya or yun ang pinaka child's dominant language. Iyon yung pinaka dominanting lingwahe ng ng bata sa kanilang bahay. At sobrang challenge ito on the part of especially yung sa elementary teachers. Because accordingly in building of the proficiency, it will allow the learners to retain, sabi, ethnic identity, ang culture. That is one thing, ano, evident siya. Mapapansin natin. And children learn better and more active in class and learn a second language even faster when they are first taught in a language they understand. We are hope, hopeful, ano, na pagdating sa atin, sa, sa high school, na our students can uh, actually have this foundation already. Kasi ang, naga, ang gagawin na lang natin, doon na tayo sa second language na doon sa kanilang elementary years, na-build na ang kanilang uh, dominant language in learning science content. Para pagdating natin doon sa ating uh, science, uh, sa, sa high school, nagpo-focus na talaga tayo doon sa English language as our medium of instruction. But as part of the feature of the curriculum, accordingly, that it really builds their professions. Fourth, ensuring integrated and seamless learning that is spiral uh, progression. Totoo yun, ano? Uh, the mastery of the competencies are present or are there. And this learning basic concept that lead to more complex and sophisticated version of general general concepts entail TPAC. Ano ba yung TPAC? Ito yung kinakailangan natin ma-accommodate class or kinakailangan na meron tayo as a 21st century learner and teacher 
the technology, uh, technological knowledge, the pedagogical knowledge, and the content knowledge. Hindi ibig sabihin na magaling lang tayo pagdating sa technology, kinakailangan magaling din tayo pagdating sa pedagogy, magaling tayo sa different approaches, different principles on how are we going to target the interest of our students, paano tayo magkaroon ng interactive, highly interactive class na wala tayong students, there are no students that is off task, na halos lahat ay involved sa klase, na kahit yung nasa likod ay nare-rich ng ating pedagogy, ng ating approaches, and most especially, your content knowledge. Kailangan may mastery din tayo doon sa content na dinideliver natin. Kailangan congruent itong lahat. Kailangan, ano yun siya, lapos-lapos gayo. Talagang uh, they are para, ano sila, connected with one another. Yung technology, your pedagogy, and your content. And second, rediscovering concepts as students progress in their grade level will be fully supported with the aid of technologies for teaching and learning. And lastly, this will further strengthen retention and will enhance mastery of topics and skills. Uh, ngayon, ang trend, I just don't know, baka nga kayo medyo hilig na hilig sa... Uh, uh, I have seen one of my, uh, one of my friends, ano, kakilala ko, na ang ginagawa niya pag nag-handle siya, nag-deliver siya ng lesson sa high school is that ang template ng kanyang lesson ay parang uh, ano, mobile legend to, inspired by mobile legend. Yung ano niya, yung template ng PowerPoint niya. Kasi nakikita or parang ginagawa niya yung mga hero, yung mga names ng hero, ina-associate niya doon sa classification pagdating sa biodiversity. Ina-associate niya yun. So this one thing, doon sa uh, nirefer natin kanina na relatable, kasi yun ang nagiging trend. Nagkakaroon ng interest ng estudyante pag nabati pa lang niya. Then majority pag dumating sa lab life. Integration also of uh, memes. Di ba? Ang dami ngayon. Yung mga memes natin sa news feeds, sa news feeds natin sa Facebook. Pag nakabasa tayo ng memes, talagang share da yun kasi relatable siya. So, we can actually integrate that in our learning plans or in our lesson. Pag nakita natin na talagang appropriate naman talaga siya. Fifth, gearing up for the future. So, the key to 12 curriculum ensure college readiness by aligning the core and applied courses to the college readiness standards of the new general education curriculum. And the key to 12 is focused on developing appropriate specialization subjects for the academic, sports, arts and design, and technical vocational livelihood track. By the way, if I were to ask you, can you name what are those specialization in academic track which or wherein we referred as strands? Sige nga, using the chat box, what are those strands under academic track? Ayan, thank you, Ms. Chris Feb, Gas, yeah, the general academic strand. You have the STEM, the Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. You have Humes, Humanities and Social, uh, yeah, Humanities and Social Sciences. Single M, double S. Yes, thank you, Miss Abigail. EBM, uh, Accountancy, Business and Management. Those are the four strands that you have to be familiar with. Tatandaan nyo yan, ha? Then, sports. Ang sports ba, may strands? Wala. Wala. Wala siyang, wala siyang strand. What about arts and design? Wala rin siya. What about TVL? TVL track. Can you share with us the strands under TVL? Kasi dapat master natin ito. Kasi, uh, when even you, uh, if you land as a science teacher in the junior high school, nagkakaroon class ng ano, ng tinatawag natin na guidance counseling. I mean, career guidance. That in the midst of the first quarter and second quarter of the, of the semester, you have to conduct as, an, as a classroom advisor because this, there is a department order for that. There is, may meron siyang deputy advisory or order that as an advisor, you are required to conduct guidance, um, career guidance for the students to actually be oriented about the K-12 curriculum. Again, can you name those strands under technical vocational livelihood track? We have four. Yes, that's correct, Ms. Jeline Fernandez. Agri-Fishery Arts Trend, that's AGFA. What else? Yeah, that's correct, Ms. Crizel. Under TVL, we have Home Economics, ICT, Agri. May isa pa. Yes, we have Industrial Arts Strand. Thank you so much for your answers. Okay, proceed tayo. Sixth feature of the curriculum is that nurturing the holistically developed Filipino. That includes the college and livelihood readiness and the 21st century skills that are 
which are expected of the senior high school graduates to have. So every key to 12 graduate is expected to be ready to go into different path. Yung sinabi natin, different path or yung senior high school four exits, yung further education, middle level skills development, employment or entrepreneurship. Then graduate is expected to be equipped with information, media and technology skills, learning and innovation skills, effective communication skills in life and career skills. You are flexible enough and to, to, to be accommodated with the different skills as expected of the senior high school graduate. Let's have this one. What is really at the end? So, a while ago, I asked you to... So, a while ago, I, I have asked you, I asked you about your experiences or those things that you failed to demonstrate during your TTL1. So in this case, what is really the bearing of TTL2? Why is there a need to have TTL2? Well, this will help you to use and to power your computer technologies and to ignite your imagination to move and motivate and support your uh, and to support you to at least have a meaningful learning delivery of science education in the near future. And even in the making of your, uh, in crafting your learning plans. This is really the, the major purpose of your TTL2. Okay, so let's have this one for 10 minutes. Do you think how can technology be used most effectively in science education in order to support and assess student learning? Do your activity in class point. Go to class point. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Kamusta kayo dito, class? Tapos na kayo dito, group 1? Why pa po, sir? Sige na, tapusin na. mag end na ang natong time. Group 2, kumusta kayo dito? Dalawa na lang kayo. Miss Daniza and Crizel. Tapos na kayo dito sa group na to. Nag-left po ang duwa po sa Amon and we are... And me and Daniza na lang po. Ah, okay. Anyway, sige. Iko-call ko naman ang ano... Ba't nag-ano ka sa chat box? Tatawagin ko naman by group. Sige, sige. Sige, natapusin nyo na at lilipat ako sa last group. Hello, class. Ano kayo damo, damo ang group 3? Tapos na ka mo, Didi, class? Masamarize na lang po, sir. Magbo-broadcast na lang ako kung magpipresent na, ha? Sige, sige. Tapos na. Good morning, class. Yung nasa, ano na, nasa main room. Hello, sir. Let's have or let's accommodate um group 1 to present their output. Good morning po, sir. Okay. Aray. Hi, sir. Ah, okay. Sige. Emeline, sige. Okay po. So, for the question, how can technology be used uh, most effectively in science education to support and assess to, uh, student learning? So, sa napag-usapan po namin kanina, sir, uh, marami pong ideya na sinagest yung uh, groupmates sa po, po namin kung paano namin magagamit technology in getting and learning process. So, um, uh, one of these po is, ano, uh, recording while doing the experiment. So, in that sense po is, um, mapapakita namin or, yes, in that way po is, ma-utilize ma po namin yung paggamit ng technology, lalo na po sa, um, sa situation natin ngayon na we are in a, distance um, learning process po. Then, um, using some PowerPoints, um, showing video clips, active, uh, presentation, and acquiring different information or different um, softwares po. So, in that way po is mas ma-engage po namin yung mga estudyante or mas mas ma-motivate po namin sila na mag-participate sa uh, or in any activities po. Okay, thank you so much. So, bigyan natin ng virtual clap ang group 1 virtual clap para sa group 1 Yay! you made mention na no, na in, uh, you presented uh, of all the members of the group they shared important tools which can actually uh, you consider to be effective in integrating or supporting students learning but my question is how certain are you that uh, this technology can can help or how will you give importance or look into the students' learning with the technologies that you have made mention? Paano nyo mabavalidate na talagang stud my students are learning with the content or they are 
ha, uh, they, are, they gain something from your topics or from the content of the discussion. Paano nyo makikita gamit yung mga technology na yun? Siguro, sir, if um, sila po talaga yung gumagawa ng output, uh, I mean, hindi po yung teacher yung gumagawa ng ways or na mga gagamitin mga mga learning materials. Yeah, that's one thing, ano. Isa yan sa mga bagay na pwede nating tingnan. If it is a self-paced in nature, ano, uh, the students can, de- uh, can manifest or can display uh, mastery. Perhaps, ano, gaya ng sinabi nyo, mastery of the content, mastery in manipulating the, the, the tools. For example, gumamit tayo ng microscope, di ba? And what we did is just in a form of demonstration. You demonstrate through a teacher in Kuat, teacher-directed approach. Pinakita mo na ito. These are the parts of the microscope. Then you allow the students to practically perform, to, to practically look into the specimen, uh, executing how to manipulate the fine and coarse adjustment knob, how to adjust the stage, how to insert the slides, the cover slip properly. So those are the, the things ano, that we can actually look into the learnings of the students in that uh, in that scenario. Okay? So, group two, shall we accommodate group two? So, as we tackle, sir, the how can technology be used most effectively in science education to support and assess student learning? So, we talk, kanina, sir, napag-usapan po namin yung importance ng technology. So, technology is the tracks and roads for every teachers and learners to build the classroom, especially in all of this amidst of this pandemic, we're not able to come to have a face-to-face classes. So through technology, we're able to have a classroom, especially to have a classroom through online classes. So especially the use of PowerPoint and different apps and different apps for us na Zoom. So the technology are very useful in resource and every teachers and students. Po. Okay, thank you, class. Uh, group 3, thank you for sharing with us your thoughts on this activity. What about group 2? So from the question, this is the general, I mean, that's the conclusion that we've come to after discussing on how can technology be used most effectively in science education to support and assist student learning. Generally, technology can be effectively used in teaching and learning process by acknowledging its capacities and varieties, variety of ways. Yes, we already acknowledge the capacity of technologies. We all know that we can use it in variety of ways so that we are able to to cater the different learning needs of our students. So by having the goal in mind to let Students choose how they will share their learning as teachers give the big idea. Idea. I believe through this, we are able to cater the multiple intelligence. Now, this time class, because I think I have come to the last slide of my presentation this morning. This time, let us try to just to refresh the things that we have made mention and discussed a while ago. Let's have this uh, quiz first. For TTL to ano? Are you ready for the quiz? Were you able to join via class point? So far, we have 23 students in the class point. So we have here actually 24 participants. Okay. So galingan nyo ha, galingan nyo. All right. Question number one. This is a competition game ha. For what do letters I C T letter C stand for or stand? A. Information, creativity, and technology. B. Innovation, communication, and technology. Information, Communication, Technology, Information, Citizenship, and Training. Start! Okay. So the correct answer is, what's the correct answer? Okay, so the answer is, learn information, communication, and technology. Okay, check natin ang leaderboard. Sino ang nangunguna? Gerald Montano, Joshua, and Jeline.